Hey everybody, it's your girl, Charlotte Van Horn, Sisters Talking Natural Hair and Business, Blocks Forever, and of course today I'm coming to you in my capacity of Black expats in Panama. And you know, I just love doing this. I love um, talking to people who are living in the country, people who want to live in the country, people that can tell us about um, Afro-descendants in the country. And today I'm going to talk to Pamela Crawford. And Pamela lives in Boquete. And the one thing that I know about Boquete is what everybody hears about, you know? And so I know that people are anxious to hear from you um, and what your life is like in Boquete. So hello, Miss Pamela, welcome. Hello, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to have you. <laughs> this is our first time meeting everybody. Um, we have been connected through uh, Black Expats in Panama Facebook group. And um, one thing I love about Pamela is um, she shares a lot and she said, you share a lot of good information. And I just really appreciate that. I said, I got to really get to talk to her. So what I want you to do is just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up in Panama and where exactly you live in Boquete. Okay, fine. I am uh, originally from LA, California, born and raised there, but my mother is Panamanian. So I had been coming back and forth to Panama. I think the first time I came, I was 14, living with my aunt in Panama City. And um, I just love Panama. I have always loved it and always wanted to live here. Uh, but my mother, being an immigrant, she left at 19 um, to go to live with my aunt in New York. My aunt was the first one. She lived in Queens. <laughs> and so she's the one that started the ferry of all of the, you know, the aunts, uncles, everybody, husbands, everybody came over. Right. And, but still, the, the Panamanian culture, the West Indian culture was, was strong in the house. And I just felt in love with that. Um, well what is your West Indian background? My grandmother, who uh, immigrated to Panama, they came to work on the on the canal. Canal, uh huh. They were from Jamaica originally. Okay. Yeah. So, um, needless to say, I just fell in love with that culture. I remember my uncle sitting around the tables talking politics and everything. You know, so I just always wanted to live here, and. I told my mom I wanted to move and she said, no, <laughs> you can't move there <laughs> because for them, you know, America was the land of milk and honey. Right. You know, they right. came to, to take advantage of making money and doing all this stuff, which is great. But the quality of life I found in Panama to be better. So, wow. um, so that's how my love of Panama came about. You know? So tell me, so your your people were your people lived in Panama City area. Yeah. My okay, father, okay. My father's from Georgia. <laughs> so okay. she met him when she uh, was in the U.S. and and that's how I came about. <laughs> okay, that's, okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So so how did you end up? At what point did you decide you were you were coming back? And how did you choose Boquete? Well, around 2006, 2007, I seriously thought, started thinking about where did I want to retire? Because my mom, she always said, make sure you prepare for your retirement, you know, have yourself all set up so you don't find yourself working until you drop dead. That's and, right. you know, I was, I worked in IT, so I managed IT groups and I was working to death. You know, you got all these computer systems you're responsible for, the company is going to fall apart if they don't stay up and so it's a very stressful job and I saw people getting ill and I was getting ill you know from just working so much and I decided I needed to start my exit plan mm -hmm. so I started coming to Panama on on visits to look around because I didn't know all I knew was Panama City and I knew I didn't want to live in the city I'm not a city person mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I, I, I thought I wanted to live on the ocean, because coming from California, that's the property that you want most, right? So I went to Bocas first, and I looked around. 
I found this piece of property, you know, it's on the ocean and, and it was affordable. So I bought it and thinking that I'll have it. And then when I'm ready to retire, I can sell my house in the U.S. and then I'll go back and build a house on that land. Okay. Well, you know, as the years went on and I got older and I kept going back to Bocas and it was hotter and hotter, you know, after you go through menopause. <laughs> Uh, yes, I couldn't take the heat, so okay. <laughs> I said I gotta look to see what else, because that's all I had known is Panama City and Bocas. So, so you had to see a Plan B. I had to see a Plan B, mm -hmm. and um, then I met mi hombre on, on one of the visits, <laughs> and yes. he started taking me all over. So you know, thankfully for him. I've been to from one end of the country to the other, and I looked everywhere. And when I got to Boquete, you knew you were home. I knew I was home. I wow. Was home. So let me let me touch on your ombre for a moment. <laughs> so because you know, a lot of sisters um, that are coming to Panama, they ask that question, like, you know, how are we received there and everything? And what I say, because my, my husband is Panamanian. Mm -hmm. I met him in the United States. Uh, we actually, we met in Mississippi. And, oh. um, but I found that, I, I think that Panamanian men are intrigued with us. I really do. Well, see, I, I knew from growing up around Panamanian men mm -hmm. that they like black women. I mean, yes. so. They got, know, songs, they they got songs about us. <laughs> <laughs> They yes. do. Every time I've come to Panama, I've had attention. I'll just put it that way. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so I, uh, I, I don't know. It's just something about a Panamanian man, a Latin man that I, I, I it's like. It's to. it's attractive to me. So, do so. Do, do you speak Spanish? <laughs> That's another story. I do now better okay. than I did. But with that West Indian culture, like I was explaining to you, um, the West Indians that were in Panama, Spoken. they felt like they didn't need to learn Spanish. So yes. even though my parents, my mother, and all of my aunts spoke fluent Spanish, none of my cousins or I were taught Spanish at home. Oh, wow. So they didn't speak to us in Spanish, they spoke to us in English, they didn't understand why we wanted to learn Spanish, and so I had to take it in school. But, you know, as going back and forth and, and, and talking to, to the Panamanians, I had to learn. <laughs> Better. Yes. And I'm, I do okay now. I, I, I've heard you, I've heard yeah. you, so. some of the words that you said, I, I could tell that you do well. Because you got that role and you got that well, accent yeah. down, baby. Well, it was funny because when you have, even the, the, even though my mother didn't speak it at home, whenever they would get mad and they had to start cursing, it would be yes. in Spanish. So <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm from Jersey. Jersey. <laughs> I'm from Jersey. And the only words we know in Spanish are cuss words, so I can completely relate. <laughs> I, I mean, but I know, and I still know all the cuss words. Wow, so that's interesting. <laughs> so then you're, 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 uh, in the, the man that ended up being your husband uh, started out being your tour guide. He did. He wow. did. Wow. I um, stepped off the plane and he just happened to be the next tour guide in line. And, Look at that. Uh, I had my daughter and my grandchildren with me. We had all come down. And so we, you know, piled into the bus and he took us to the hotel and I had to go meet with my attorney to, to finalize the land purchase the next right. day. He said, okay, I'll come back and get you. And he came back and he, <laughs> he picked me up bright and early and he stayed and waited and took me wherever else I needed to go. We went touring around. We saw Vera Indians. And then wow. I said, we're going to Bocas. And he said, okay, I'll be here when you come back. And he was there when I came back. Wow. And so, you know, when I was ready to leave, he, he asked me not to leave. I said, I got to go to work. I can't stay here. <laughs> and so he asked for my number. And I didn't think I'd ever hear from him again. But he called me just about every day and um, asked that me to come awesome. back. So yeah. what year was that? That was 2008. 
2008? 2008. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, I just kept coming back and forth. <laughs> so, okay. So, so you ended up in Boquete. So tell us about your community. Okay. So I love Boquete because it's mountainous. You know, I've mm -hmm. heard you say that you don't like mountains. I love mountains. Mm -mm. And I want to be able to have a view. Even when I lived in LA, I lived on a hill. So I, I want to be able to see yes. that, you know, what's going on down below. <laughs> yes. So, um, I, I looked at several properties here and I had a great real estate agent and she took me around and I, you know, had several deals going, but they always fell through because we couldn't come to an agreement on, on the price. And so I um, went back and mm -hmm. my real estate agent called me and she said, you got this other property just came on the market. You got to come and see it. I said, I'm in the States already. I, I can't fly back already. I have to go back to work. Now, you know, yes. Yeah. Work. <laughs> so, so she said, well, send, send Marco down. And so he flew from Panama City and came to see it. And he knew all my specifications. And he said, yeah, it's beautiful. You're going to love it. They sent me pictures. And so I did the contract over, uh, over the internet uh, while well, I was still in the U.S. And wow. I had everything that I wanted because we're, I'm in a small little community of um, only four houses and they're all custom. The person that I bought the house from, she actually worked for the U.N., but she's Panamanian. So she had bought this piece of land to build a compound for her family. Mm -hmm. So she, she made a house for her and another one for her oldest son. And so I, the son decided that he wanted a, a, a fishing cabin upstate New York and he sold it to me. So that's how I ended up here. But they're wow. very, I mean, it's like I, you know, and, and was in, welcomed into another family. They're close enough. They have caretakers here and, and um, I just love it. I, I have my view. I have my garden. I love flowers so I can plant whatever I want. You know, I'm hearing, um, I'm hearing people talk about, you know, most people, you know, say, oh, Boquete is cold. Well, there's a sister living there and um, she's new there. Her name is Erica. And um, she said, I grew up in Florida. And that thought, that's an interesting perspective because she was like, I wasn't, I'm not looking for hot. So yes. Boquete was attractive to her in that regard because it wasn't hot. You know, I'm a Jersey girl, you know, and I've grown up and, you know, I've basically lived my life in the North and I love the heat. So that's one of the things that I do like about being in the city. But the other thing that I hear them saying in, the, in this group is that they want to be in a place where they can live off the land. Yeah. And they were saying that the soil is good in Boquete yeah. um, and that it's just, I guess it, you can have a more of a bohemian type lifestyle, not necessarily bohemian, I haven't even, um, just basically where you can grow your own food and be more holistic, <laughs> holistic lifestyle. Well, and that's what I was uh, uh, um, trying to, to get to because I didn't want to be in a place where I couldn't sustain myself if something, you know, the world blew up or whatever. I knew <laughs> that I could ma manage here. So this at property actually is a coffee farm. And so I have, have a, you know, what I consider a U.S. style home on a coffee farm, I have all of the comforts that I want and it's decorated and designed the way I want. And then I have, I can grow whatever. I have lettuce growing and, and all the coffee. We've got oranges. I've got lots so of- So you actually bananas. grow coffee, girl? Oh yeah, I grow geisha. Wow, Let they say y'all got the best coffee out there. <laughs> Absolutely, I sure do. I'm in Jaramillo Arriba which is a, a corregimiento that is a, um, where they grow a lot of, of, of geisha coffee. Geisha and patuay are the two. Okay. So yeah. is that, do you sell the coffee? I have, well, you know, I have my Airbnb. So I have my casita that, and, and another um, outside uh, suite that people uh, rent through Airbnb and booking. And so I give them samples and if they ask me for it, 
I, I've had clients that ask me for coffee. And so, yes, I do sell coffee. <laughs> so that, that is, that is awesome. Yeah, it's, it's, it's wonderful because I, you know, I'm now become a coffee snob and <laughs> I can't even travel without my own coffee. Because okay, so Duran, so what do you think of Duran coffee? It's okay. <laughs> you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to give me some of your coffee because I'm telling you, <laughs> when I turn my friends on to Duran, when I, when I'm back and forth to Panama, I always have to bring coffee back with me. I have never been a coffee snob, but when I tell you, Duran coffee just speaks to me. It what does. And I was like, we were somewhere and we had some coffee. I was like, what is this? It's yeah. so nutty and nice. This is where it's grown. I sell my coffee beans, my, my non-geisha coffee beans I sell to Duran. So you probably- wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So now tell me, can you tell me for, for those of us that don't know, including myself, what does it mean when you say geisha? Geisha is a variety of coffee that is grown here. And it seems that the climate, I think it was originally from Ethiopia, mm -hmm. but I don't know how many years ago they started growing it here in Boquete and it is in such demand Every time there is a coffee show, Panama varieties always win the, wow. the game because it's not bitter. It has a very, very smooth quality about it, and which that's is what wild. I like about Duran. Yeah, well, it's 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 still grown in Boquete. The Duran. Wow. Thing. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so so okay. I guess I gotta try some geisha. Yes, you have to to try some finca caramelo. Geisha. Okay. So. Wow. Well, that is know. awesome. So now know. tell me as, as far as your social life, um, what is, what is the community like? Um, mm -hmm. the, what is the diversity there? That's something everybody likes to know. Um, tell us about that. What are your experiences with that? Well, I'm a, a homebody. Okay. So I don't, I'm not one to go out and party and club and stuff like that. That's just, I'm too old now for any of that. Mm -hmm. But I do have friends. I've got my sister friends that, that are here and we get together. Um, we've gotten together on occasion to watch movies and do stuff and have girl talk and all that stuff. Um, but there are bars and restaurants and, uh, you know, people go out and party and yeah. but 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 that's just not me. I go out to, right, to right. restaurants and stuff at night. Um, but for the most part, what I enjoy is my garden and my flowers. I'll go on a garden tour in a minute. <laughs> so you know, I've I've joined the Jaramillo Garden Club and the Boquete Garden Club, and, and we do plant exchange, exchanges or go up to different farms to look for different varieties of flowers and and that. It's fun to me. Don't they <laughs> so, have they they have like a um don't they have like a flower festival or something? There, yeah, the uh, feria de las flores de café. Okay, yeah. when is that uh, usually held? In February. in February. Okay. Yeah, coming up. So it is um, an event that always keeps me busy because everybody comes from not just from Panama City but other. Um, you know, all, all people come from all over the world to go to that fair and they have a lot of entertainment and stuff. So it's like a madhouse in Boquete during that time. But um, there's a lot of entertainment and a lot of stuff to do, a lot of stuff to see. And so if you like crowds, then come on down. Well, I don't like crowds, but uh, I, don't either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I have never been to carnival. Um, and I have no desire whatsoever. Um, I just, I don't like, I don't really like big crowds, COVID or not. Um, but you, you mentioned, um, that your, your husband flew in, um, from Panama to Boquete. What is that like? Um, it's a quick flight, isn't it? It's like 45 minutes or so, 50 minutes. It's, it's, I don't know if you're familiar with the West Coast. It's like flying from LA to San Francisco. It's that that far. Okay. 
So it's a quick flight, but we've driven a, a bunch of times too. So we've driven several times. From so Panama. when you drive, how are the roads? How do you find the roads? It's, the roads in Panama are great. I, mm -hmm. That was the one thing that impressed me the most about um, how well they maintain the roads. It's, yes. it's, and now you've got more highways and, and not more highways, more, um, what do you call it? The... Um, the, the road stop, I mean, the, the places that you stop on the road to eat and-, and Oh, yeah, 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 like, um, yeah, stop. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like stops. They, they built more. Because in, yes. in, in the old days, they, they had one. You would stop in Santiago and you would go to McDonald's and go to the bathroom and then you go on. And that's it. <laughs> so yeah. how long is the, I mean, I know I, I, I have clients that come to Panama from Boquete to get their hair done. And mm -hmm. they, I know that it's an eight hour bus ride. How, how long is it if you just drive yourself? Uh, we've gotten here at, as short as six hours and as long as eight. So, you know, I average seven hours of driving. Do you drive in Panama? Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> wow. I should, it I took me a minute. Huh? It, took, it took me a minute. Oh, no. Especially, I mean, well, I don't know what the difference is in Boquete as opposed to being closer to Panama City, but um, the driving is so, I was like, okay, so Panama is the happiest place in the world. Like, why is everybody driving crazy? You know, I mean, the horns and it, it's like driving in Panama. I eventually had to start driving because I could not wait around for my husband to feel like taking me where I want to go, right? But I mean, between the horns and people not like really coming to a complete stop and everything, I feel like I got to put on my gangster face when I get in the <laughs> car and, and I can't, I don't relax when I drive in Panama because I feel like you always got to be on your P's and Q's. Yeah. No, if, if I felt like if I could drive in LA and that's where I learned how to drive, I mm -hmm. could drive in here. So here, I don't, I've never had to drive in Panama City. Uh-huh. But I drive here in Boquete, and then I drive to David. Now, David is the second largest city in Panama. So okay. it has some craziness going on down there, like, like Panama City, but it's just not as big. So. And David is pretty close to Boquete. It's about 40, 45 minutes away from me, anyway. Is yeah. that where people fly in, right? So yes. people, if they come to Boquete, they fly into David. Yes, that's where the bus drops you first, too, if you take the bus. Okay. Well, yeah, the bus terminal was there. Um, I'm glad that you talked about the roads um, because that is important. And even when um, I was seeing something the other day and it was saying that, you know, when you go into an international place, make sure you understand all of the seasons. Make sure if you want to buy some land or you want to buy a house there to make sure you see it every season, you know, in case you get washed out during rainy season and things like that. I thought that was the best advice. The one thing that I like about um, Risa the Golf Norte is the highway. So yeah. we very seldom have to get into, you know, the, the bumper to bumper smaller streets traffic because we live directly off the highway. So I, I really enjoy that just because of my particular preferences. So the other thing I like to ask girls about because girls want to know Tell us about, tell us about the critters. You guys are so <laughs> It just tickles me to death when I see all the, the, the. That, don't, listen, Pamela, don't judge us. It's a for real thing. Well, you know, when I bought this house, I had to remodel it because I didn't like some things about it. So it was open for months while they were, cause they, I changed windows, I changed the doors. So yes. the stuff came in. And when I finally moved in here and I would be sitting in the living room and see stuff crawling across the floor. I'm like, what, what is it? But they had, you know, hidden in, in different places, yes. you know. But you mean I'm the geckos? Our, Was it geckos? Oh no, no, I have, we have geckos outside and okay. they're in the garage. But the, the spiders, there were spiders in here, and I'm going to tell you something, don't scream. There were scorpions, small ones, little ones. 
And I used to be so scared of them because I, you know, you hear all the horror stories about scorpions and they sting you and you're gonna die, right? Well, I've learned that they're very slow. So if you- You got time to go get your shoe. You do, and you can step on them and they die and then you just sweep them up. But I, you know- How big, but when you say the little scorpions, like what we talking here? How big? I'll send you a picture after the thing, but they're about this big. They're not big. <laughs> okay. Look. Okay. But you have to learn. So my gardener told me you have to fumigate around the perimeter of the house mm -hmm. and that keeps everything out. And I've learned to cut a piece of sponge to put on the ends of the sliding doors and so that they don't come under the track because they'll come under the track and your sliding doors too. So I put sponge there and they can't get through. And I, I spray the sponge with, with um, um, uh, Morti, Mortine. It's a, a brand of uh, insect repellent that they sell here that has uh, can, um, canela oil. Okay. That keeps everything out. So once I got rid look, of the- Look, look, spell it, Mortine. <laughs> I'll send you. <laughs> I'll send you. I'll have Alfredo get me some. Yeah, so, you know, I don't have bugs in the house. And you can come visit and see, but I don't have bugs. And, and I, you know, the guest house doesn't have bugs. Um, so, you, I don't, you know, I see them outside. And I think it's, it's funny to watch their little show because I can look out on my, little, on my deck and see big things, big beetles and, and with the antenna and big moths and stuff, but they're outside. So I like watching nature as wow. long as it stays outside. And, and the geckos I, don't bother you at all. And so when you're gardening, you know, what do you see mostly? Well, I, when I first got here and I was gardening a lot, um, I was getting bit by coffee flies during the, during the when the coffee flowers, it's a little, a little white flower, yeah. you get a little coffee flies. In, in the South, they used to call them no see in, 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 in the States. Okay. Same, same type of fly. Chitre. It's, it, and, and when they would bite me, you know, it, I didn't know that I was bit because you don't feel it right away. But Until later. Over, over time, you could see, you know, that you had been bitten, you, the itching and stuff would start. But um, the cure for that is to, to eat local honey. So now when I go out, they don't bother me. And I, you know, cause I was looking at other people, especially the indigenous people and they, they get bit and they're out there walking in the rain and everything else yeah. and they didn't have a problem. So they, they said, you have, to, you have to eat local food, stuff that you grow here and it helps you build your resistance to that stuff. So now they don't bother me. Do you eat meat? I don't, I eat, well, I don't eat um, red meat. I don't eat beef. Well, I don't really care for the beef in Panama. It's oh, not my favorite to eat. Oh, but when I tell you, I became a chicken snob okay. and a pork chop snob after it, the food is so different. But the food tastes so good in Panama. Mm -hmm. um, but I can really hurt myself on them Panama chuletas. Yes, oh, you can see here, goodness. you can actually get your order directly from a butcher, the farmer, mm -hmm. and they'll deliver it to you. And, you know, with the chicken too, and you can get everything is, is range free, free range and nothing is fed anything artificial. And, and just the quality of the meat to me, like you, is, is so, so much better. Yeah, yeah, it is. It really is. Now, uh, tell yeah. me this, have, have you had the need to, um, have medical services and how have you found that and how did you prepare for it? Well, I, um, you ask around. I, Boquete has a really good network of people that help as expats. So I've got neighbors that are, the wife is from Amsterdam and the husband is from the US. And, and you know, if you need something or you need to know where something is, you can either reach out on the on the Facebook page, the Boquete Community Facebook page, uh -huh. or just talk to people that I've met. You know, I took a Tai Chi class, and that's how I met her, and I didn't even know that she was my neighbor. And so, you know, they've invited me to dinner, and I've invited them, and 
And so that's how you, you find out what doctors are good. You can, people ask just about every day, who, what, what's the best right. dentist? What's the best this? And everybody gives their opinion. Right. And when you see the same doctor's name repeated over and over again for whatever the thing you need, then that's the one you choose, obviously. Yes. But um, people have had some really serious conditions um, that they've had to deal with. And they've been very happy with the doctors here. I have, I'm have. i very happy with my doctor. I only pay $12 to go see wow. with my GP. And um, she's, she's, um, she speaks perfect English. Mm -hmm. But even my gynecologist in, in, in Panama City, you know, they've got all the latest equipment. I've had mammograms here. They've got all the latest yes. equipment from there, ultrasounds, all latest equipment. And it wasn't expensive at all, you know. And I think that's the kind of thing, like I know that um, Americans in particular are always concerned about medical and rightfully so, because medical here is ridiculous. But in Panama, you can actually go to the pharmacy and get um, prescriptions, you know, on your own. Yeah. Um, and, and it's so much, it, it is not, it, it is just not even on the same scale at all. Here, an illness can actually bankrupt you. Absolutely. And, yeah. Cause I didn't, when I left the, I kind of ended up ha leaving earlier to live here full time than, than I had intended because my company went through a merger and they told us that we had to move to St. Louis or Charlotte. And I was, I had already bought this house. I'm not moving to one of those places. So I said, okay, I guess I'm retiring. So I, I ended up retiring earlier than I wanted to. So I didn't qual, but I was too early for me to qualify for Medicare, you know? Yeah. So I, I didn't buy any insurance. I just said, I'm taking my chances. And if I go to the doctor, I'll self-insure. And, and, you know, $50 to see a, a specialist and $12 to see a, general practitioner, you know, you can deal I, with that. I can handle it. I, I think ab I, absolutely. The and I, 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 really do, I really do appreciate your sharing that. Okay. So let me ask you this. Um, it's so nice to see you uh, in person and yeah. I, I, your hair is beautiful. Oh, thank and you. so let me ask you this, when you came to Panama, were you already natural or was that a progression and how have you found like your weather, your hair? Somebody was saying in the group the other day that their hair had just absolutely adjusted to the climate, but that it was an adjustment. So tell us about your beautiful natural. Well, I went, I've been natural for a long, long time because working in IT, you know, you're always on call. You have to run into here and there and, and, and go into the office to fix whatever. And so I didn't have time to deal with my hair. So I just started twisting it and experimenting with different gels and what have you. And I found a combination that works for me that here. works for you. So I just twist it. And for the most part, it's twisted. And then, like, I, I got fancy today. I took the twist out. So <laughs> just for you. But <laughs> it, it, looks, it, it, look, it looks amazing. Oh, and, and I think that... And, and I think that... Um, it's sort of just like, you know, everything else is like, you got to find your sweet spot, you, you know, with, with the hair. And, it's, and so have you found it easy to get the products that you need in Panama? Or do you order Amazon or how do you do that? Yeah. In so city? I, I'm at the, the, you know, I have to dye it. Otherwise I'll be gray. And, and so the, the dye, I, I, I did find it at, at, at one time in Organica, but they didn't have the shades that I need. So I still order it from Amazon, but I went to get it done at a salon once because I didn't feel like doing it myself. And they turned me on to this leave-in conditioner that, that protects your hair against humidity. And that what? stuff is awesome. Wow. That stuff is awesome. So you put it on after you wash and condition and then you just leave it in and then you put your gel on top of it. And I twist it and I get this and I can go out all day and this stays just like this. Boom, boom, pow. You know, I have <laughs> sister locks and um, the thing with me in Panama is my hair doesn't hold curls. 
in oh. Panama, it does not hold curls. And the longer it gets, the less curls it holds. So if I'm if I'm gonna get cute when I'm in Panama, I gotta make it quick. Get me some good pictures right quick because it doesn't really hold as well. It, it, it acts better when it's shorter. Um, oh. But right now I'm just growing it out for, um, for a little while. But, you know, again, that's something that we want to know. I'll send you the list of stuff that I, I, I use. Okay. Um, because I used, to, my mom and I, when my mom retired, we, she wanted a beauty supply. And that's what we, we did, <laughs> you know, back in, in, and really yeah we had a beauty supply and then a salon and and so i really got into hair products and stuff so we wow. used to sell well, you, sister lots <laughs> sister lots we don't use things on our hair oh okay we really? don't we don't you know we don't use um we don't use like conditioners you know especially new people with new sister lots really don't um, but for the most part, we use very little products on our hair. So it's mainly because the locks keep it controlled. So uh, the, the, the mainly with the loose natural, that's, that's where you really can benefit yeah, from yeah, having yeah. those leave-on conditioners and stuff like that. But with sister locks, we don't really use anything too much uh, on our hair. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of the hardest things to get used to when you get them because they say, you know, don't put no oils in your hair. And you're like, yeah, okay, I know that's what I said. And I thought <laughs> I'd need it. But it's interesting that you you, you have natural oils that it, we don't we don't really have to do that a lot. So some people have a little extra dryness and you can treat it, but you don't do like excessive stuff on your hair. So, I mean, I did not expect our conversation to go from office <laughs> to coffee um, and, and all the, and, and hair, but yeah. um, this has been a really good conversation. So yeah. tell me this, what do you think, what is your, what is the advice you would give to people who are considering Panama as their next home? Just research and take your time mm -hmm. and know the different areas. Cause you know, I thought I knew, you know, when mm -hmm. I bought that property in Brocus and now I'm right. selling it. So if anybody mm -hmm. wants to buy it, <laughs> but you, 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 you have to know Really make sure you list it. <laughs> yeah, I, it's it's on the view. It's it's listed, but um, I can't get to it to show anybody right now because of because all of the, the, the storms, and the roads and stuff. So, but um, you just have to make sure that the area that you want to be in is really what you want. Like the areas that I was accustomed to growing up in LA, when I got to Panama, I was looking for that same thing. Mm -hmm. I didn't ever consider that I wanted to just that be in the mountains, you yeah. know, and yeah. something different. But this was is more per perfect to me in Boquete than it was in Bocas. So wow. you you got like you said, you've got to know, you know, the neighborhoods. You've got to know if they um, got a, a problem with stray dogs and or you know crime or you know because. I, we, I've never had a problem up here with any crime, but other areas that are that are more flat and closer to town. That's why I live, like living up in the mountains. It's kind of okay. hard to get up here at running because it's hilly. <laughs> so okay, uh, yeah. But living next to a, a a river may be beautiful when it's not raining, but during rainy season, like we have now, when you've got all these torrential rains, people's houses have fallen into the river. So those are the types of things that you really have to consider and um, know if you can deal with it. You know, if, if you're a person that doesn't like bugs, I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> there's, there's bugs all over Panama. And, but, but it's, I, I don't, I, the place that I saw the most bugs was at the Gamboa uh, Resort in Gamboa. Yeah. That's like in the rainforest, though, right? In the rainforest. I, yeah. My cousin and I were sharing a room, and we had closed the drapes, and then we opened them to look outside for some reason, and it was just covered <laughs> with all kinds of stuff. And I'd never seen anything like that in my life, but we go outside. So um, you didn't see them in the daytime, but you, you certainly saw them at night. So. Well, in where I live, 
Um, and I understand, you know, even living in Florida, you know, my daughter lives in Florida and that was an adjustment for her. She has snakes, you know, I mean, geckos. And she did not tell me that she had geckos. And when I got to her house, I was looking at the, the uh, oh, I went, they had this nice screen in porch. It was beautiful in the back. And I'm sitting there and uh, and I looked to my right and I said, that's a gecko. So I, told, I, I, told her, I said, I thought you said you didn't have no geckos. And she said, Ma, you wouldn't have come. <laughs> you you have. Well, they I, eat bugs. So. I have worked on it. I don't care. I'll kill my own bugs. Okay. I don't need them. <laughs> I don't need them like that. Okay. I, for people who are, you know, are not, because I didn't grow up around any any li lizards that move fast okay uh -huh. and so frogs i don't like frogs either but frogs was not foreign to me the first time i saw a gecko was in mississippi and i was like what is that but what i did because i love panama so much but to be honest with you if i could tell you the one thing that i don't like about panama is geckos um <laughs> honestly Honestly, so I started going to, I, I, I looked it up and I'm like a hyperphobe something, I think. <laughs> but I went to the uh, pet store and this might help somebody else. I know it seems silly to you, but what I found <laughs> is that one person experiences stuff, a lot of other people do too. Mm -hmm. So I was determined not to let geckos ruin my future life in Panama, okay? So I started going to PetSmart and trying to desensitize myself to at least be able to look at them okay yeah. i still don't like them but i've come a long way with them i'm comfortable in my house everything is screened up alfredo knows can't no cracks be in the door you know if yeah. i can see the outside we need to fix it you know I, it, it's but i have the screens i spray but we only get a couple every evening after the sun goes down we get a couple yeah. on the carport and if I go out there, I take some uh, lavender, eucalyptus, lemongrass, and I spray. And if I spray like once, it'll keep them away for like a week. Oh. So, and the place smells amazing. Right. Yeah. So, I've, I've worked, but we don't, the spiders, we don't, uh -huh. I haven't dealt with any of that. Um, we have, we had mosquitoes one time where we were getting the yeah. mosquitoes. And th that is in eight years. We've been there for eight years now. And that one time we were getting mosquitoes for some reason, and that was miserable. But we have yeah. a mosquito truck. Do y'all have the mosquito trucks? No, because it's not, it's really not hot up here and the water moves. So we don't have a lot of standing Mosquito, water. People are yes. really good about yes. making sure that they don't have standing water around. Yes. I mean, I've seen mosquitoes in my, my, um, my garage when I go out, but I try not to go out at night. <laughs> so I don't yeah. have to deal with them, Me you too. know, Me too. as long as I, I and you know, I have those mesh screens that, that close when if you go out and, and so you don't have things that are coming in right away as, as soon as you open the door. So I they heard can't about that. Yeah. And then the little things that you can buy to, for the, the berries on the bottom of your door, mm -hmm. I put those on every exterior door so yes. that nothing can crawl under. My little sponge trick for the sliding doors. Yes. And then like you, I spray, I spray around the door. Yes. You know, and then I have the gardener. He does my exterminating around the perimeter, and that keeps me from. And you good as long as they ain't in the house with you. Exactly. Yeah. I, I like watching them outside, and I like the birds eat them. They come, and they put on a show every day. And I've got, <laughs> I've got another little creature called a neck necky. You never heard of him? Well, he came this morning, so I saw him. Is he like a squirrel? Is he like a squirrel? It's a cross between a squirrel and a, it's bigger than a squirrel. It's oh. about big. <laughs> Lord of mercy. You got monkeys. You got monkeys out there. I don't, I don't have monkeys. We got birds. We got beautiful birds. And I put bananas and stuff out there for the birds to eat because I like to watch them. And I've got a lot of bird watchers that come because... We have a bank of trees next to the stream, next to the house. 
Yeah. And they, we have the um, Quetzal has been, we have seen those and just a bunch of really nice birds. And that to me is, is beautiful. So, that's nice that's yeah. nice we don't have any monkeys uh, we've got but I, I've, I've heard that there are monkeys in um um boquete i i haven't seen one one of, one of my friends said they have monkeys and people have been feeding them and she said they go whoo 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 <laughs> yeah there uh, there one and there is a lady that that is like a rescue She's in Palmira, and she has she has a couple of um, of monkeys down there, and they're they're very friendly. Okay. <laughs> like, okay, girl. Look, look. Okay, yeah. girl. <laughs> so, but listen, this yeah, has been. Huh? I said I like watching nature as long as I'm in That is awesome. <laughs> that is that is awesome. And I like, you know, to and I mean it's like even when I see somebody, I saw a picture of somebody walking down um like a like a wooden like a wooden sidewalk or plank or whatever and it was all this greenery on the side and i think to myself he's so crazy that's such a beautiful scene but scene but all i think to myself is oh my god there are probably so many things in the greenery you know and so that's something that i work with and that's why living in the suburbs is so much better for me for you, you know, yeah. Like I guess because yeah, it's it's a lot better. It's a lot better um, for me, and it helps me to ease into the Panamanian life because it's similar to what I'm used to. So okay. it's similar, but it's it's enough that it's not the same. That right. makes me it it may I feel very comfortable there. I like being able to walk to stuff. I like you know, just having a lot of different kind of people um, around me. And okay. Panama, I tell you, even being in the suburbs and Brisa the Golf Norte, it's a little busy now. So it's very built up. But when I yeah. tell you I sleep so good, girl, Panama, <laughs> I ain't had that good sleep since March. I have not been to Panama since March. Oh yes, and yeah, I am. That, that, I, I, I got my ticket to come back, so okay. um, I'm looking forward yeah. to that. Um, but I sleep in Panama. My I feel more of a a zen, exactly. you know, in can, Panama. It gets dark too soon for me. I don't like yeah, that it gets dark I, I so really, early. Oh. Well, I don't care. I, I, watch, <laughs> I watch the clouds and everything. <laughs> but but I, 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 can, I feel like I can breathe here. I need green um, because being in the city, you know, I, uh, it's just too much. It, yeah. it, if I go back to L.A., I, I, I'm ready to come back here yes. right away. It's I just feel you. Um, all the I traffic feel you. and the honking horns and all that stuff, I can't do it. Yeah. But this it, this has been an awesome chat better. and um I'm going to bid you a good night but I thank you so much for um coming on and talking with us as as you do on the page you've shared some really insightful information uh with us and also I want to encourage other Panamanians you know, to come to our to come to our group too, because their you know perspective and knowledge is just so valuable. You know, and 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 it, it really it really helps us to grow and to make our choices. Yes, you know? absolutely. And, you know, I I really encourage other West Indian Panamanians mm -hmm. who have the same history as my my mom mm -hmm. to speak about that because I'm still learning about that whole migration and there's a lot of stories that i would love to to know about and you know if people know my mom her name was ruth ruth elaine brammer mm. harriet then you know if you if somebody knows of a relative or something that's still alive i would love to meet them <laughs> wow so yeah. is your is your mom passed she has yes she so has. how old would she have been Oh, she passed in 2018. 
and um, so at 92, so she would be 94 right now. She okay. She's a little older than my um, my my uh, my in loves. My mother and father in love. They are both their parent and their their parents uh, worked on the canal. That's how they got here. Um, mother in law is from. Um, Jamaica, and then my father is from Barbados, ah. my, my husband. So that's how they got here too. But they're in their 80s, so they're a little younger than her. But her last name is Bremer? Bremer, her last name is Harriet. Her mother's name was Bremer, mother's main name. I'll ask my father-in-law and see if he knows. And thanks for making that plea. Have you been over to Samap? You been to the West Indian Museum? In Panama? No, no. Okay. Well, when you, next time, next time you come, you gotta go. Uh, okay. You would really, you would really love the interview that we did with Melva, Melva Lowe. Okay. She's the president of it's a society of friends of the West Indians, Afro, um, Afro and really, And really so you gotta. It, it, I, anytime I take a trip there, I I go to that museum because okay. the history is so rich. And that is one of the things that we want to do. We want to share it. So anyway, girl, I got to go. Okay. But it has been real. Thank you for um, coming thank on with you. me. And to all of our audience and people watching, thank you. I hope that you enjoyed this conversation. Make sure that you follow us on Facebook. Um, you can come here for our YouTube videos, but our Facebook group is Black Expats in Panama. And we are here to expose you to the Black culture of Panama and just the possibilities of living in whatever area, whatever you like. Panama's got it. That's the one good thing about Panama. Panama's got it. So um, again, um, thank you very much, Pamela. I'll see you online, mama. And I'll see you when I get to Panama. I, you, you got me. This is the first time, okay, that I've had a conversation where I said, you know what? I'm just going to have to go check out Boquete. So I'm going to come visit you. I'm not going to bring you any coffee. I'm not going to send it. You have to come get it. <laughs> there you go okay. I'm going to do it and I'm looking forward to meeting you I'm looking forward to meeting you soon absolutely Okay. I'm thank you my love okay alright <laughs> good night okay. bye bye bye, -bye.